afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you so much for joining with us today. On behalf of the Institute of Chartered Professional Managers of Sri Lanka, let me welcome all of you for this wonderful event to celebrate the International Women's Day 2021. Yet once again, the International Women's Day has come down to make us aware of women and their social boundaries. As I quote from today's event primable, the United States Federal Glass Ceiling Commission defines the glass ceiling as the unseen yet unbreachable barrier that keeps minorities and women from rising to the upper ranks of the corporate ladder, regardless of their qualifications or achievements. The term glass ceiling was first used by Marilyn Lawden during a 1978 speech today in the 21st century, society has come a long way in establishing gender equality. Yet, nevertheless, the day is used as a measure of progress when organizations look back on new challenges and development in women's rights, unquote. Having said that, I believe it should be a day to celebrate how far women have contributed economically and socially to uplift everyone's lives irrespective of their gender, age, religion, and any other barrier. The theme for International Women's Day 2021 is choose to challenge, to bring about a constructive change, challenging gender biases. So aligning this theme, CPM Sri Lanka to has invited eight of our lady members, signifying the date and emphasizing the theme to express what they can articulate with their learnings. It is great privilege to compare this event by representing all the women who immensely contribute in many ways to empower this nation. So we have lined up the keynote speech followed by an interactive panel discussion. With that, we are moving to the today's welcome speech by one and only gentleman presented here with us today. It's none other than our Professor Lakshmanar Watavala, the founder and the president of CPM Sri Lanka. Professor, over to you, sir. Thank you, uh, Darshika. I think uh, I'm indeed uh, privileged to be among uh, all, all you uh, uh, lovely ladies who are here because uh, today in the International Women's Day, I'm sure uh, all of you are ready uh, to speak on the topic of choose to challenge role of professional women. I'm indeed happy to see our keynote speaker, Mrs. Ushani Rohanadira, who is the Chief of Staff and Deputy Secretary General of Parliament. I think we are indeed uh, privileged to have someone from uh, the Parliament uh, giving the keynote address, and I think she will be really uh, supported by the many uh, others from the different fields of uh, education, business, government, uh, entrepreneurship, and many other areas that uh, with which you have experience, including the IT and digital area. Uh, as you know, I think uh, women are really a very, very important uh, sector, but always uh, uh, people say that uh, women are not given the proper place, but I don't know whether uh, uh, that is really uh, uh, the true thing to say, but always I'm sure uh, they are they have been playing a very important role. And even if you see how the, uh, especially with this COVID-19 pandemic, I think uh, there was one area which was really beneficial to uh, uh, women that was uh, working from home. I think that's something that uh, we should continue and uh, that will benefit uh, uh, many uh, if that can be done, plus also we, have, we can increase the number of people who can work from home, if that is permitted. And also, of course, we need to bring in uh, to the labor legislation also, because currently uh, there is nothing uh, uh, on, on the aspects of working from home. And of course, the digitalization which has taken place, that's how we have been all been able to get together. Otherwise, we would have all had to come to maybe uh, go to a uh, one hall uh, where we could have met, but now it is much more convenient uh, that we are able to maybe uh, speak from our own uh, either officers or some from home 
So that's uh, a very, very uh, uh, important area. Now, even if you look at the uh, contributions by uh, the ladies and women, uh, one of the things that I have seen, of course, is uh, especially uh, in the export sector. If you uh, see how the uh, garment industry has been uh, uh, really uh, focusing on the exports and where it has is uh, many, almost 90 or 95% you know, of the employees are all females. So that's uh, one, one very big area, plus also the contribution of the exports where they are contributing. And not only that, uh, where uh, since these factories are located in the outstations, uh, the, uh, the uh, women folk in the rural uh, areas have been able to uh, contribute to the exports, to send the garments manufactured to overseas countries. So this is uh, something that is uh, very, very special. And one can uh, see is as a very big, uh, uh, maybe achievement uh, from the uh, women's side. Then in addition to that, of course, you all know that the first prime minister uh, of Sri Lanka, the first prime minister, lady prime minister was from Sri Lanka. So that's also another uh, very proud uh, achievement uh, for Sri Lanka. Unfortunately, we, we now have uh, in a different <clears throat> era where education has to come in. If you look at education also, most of the universities, the provisional institutes, the larger numbers are coming from the women folk. So that's again uh, another uh, area where they have overtaken uh, many uh, many of the men uh, who may be involved in maybe uh, uh, in other activities also. But once you come into the job side, then there seems to be uh, some problems, especially if you look at the private sector, uh, the numbers uh, coming to the top posts are still uh, not sufficient. But we feel that this will also uh, uh, catch up and that uh, this will help uh, the, uh, the country. Plus also, I'm sure uh, our keynote speaker will be able to tell about the political side where uh, uh, it has been made uh, compulsory for maybe a certain percentage of uh, women parliamentarians to the local government and others, uh, which will help. But everywhere, it is really the education that has to come in. That's why we are... CPM, the Chartered Professional Managers, are really playing a major role. Because we feel that uh, management is a key area. If not for proper management, uh, in any profession, you will find that uh, you will not be able to make a success. Even in uh, governing, even governing a country, it's the same thing. Because uh, good management means uh, not only the good uh, governance will be there, but also the the cost can be cut, uh, the uh, performance can be improved. So there are many, many areas uh, that we require. And that's uh, one area that uh, our chartered professional managers are involved. And I must thank all of you. Most, or most of you all are all involved with us and helping us. And I'm sure that this uh, seminar that we are having uh, will be a great success because uh, your experiences are very, very important. And I'm sure today you will tell uh, all our uh, participants about the great achievements uh, you have done and, of course, uh, the challenges you have faced and how you have overcome. So once again, let me welcome all of you, especially our uh, keynote speaker, the panelist, uh, then, of course, our uh, moderator, uh, who will be playing a very uh, important role in this, and all our participants who are they are today to give the strength and courage uh, to celebrate uh, the International Women's Day. And I'm sure we uh, will be able to take uh, CPM forward with the great contribution that you are doing and also that you will contribute to the economic and social development of the country. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Vatabala. And also I would like to invite all our participants that if you have any questions, please kindly send them our chat box. Our team will be directed to your question to our panelists during the panel discussion. Now let me take this opportunity to invite and introduce our keynote speaker, Mrs. Kushani Rohanadira. Ms. Kushani Rohanadira is an attorney at law currently working as the Chief of Staff and Deputy Secretary General of Parliament. 
graduated from the University of Colombo, and she holds a degree in bioscience. She has a LLB from the Open University of Colombo, and she started her career with Sampath Bank in 1989. Having completed her university education, she worked at the National Institute of Education, Informatic Information Systems, and joined parliament in 1999. She has served in many offices in parliament and was appointed as the Assistant Secretary General in 2012. She was promoted to the current post in 2020 while working in the parliament she has participated in a number of international conferences and workshops on parliamentary procedures and practices. She's also serving as a secretary to the Women Parliamentarian Caucus and Children's Caucus in Parliament. She loves cooking and listening to the music. Ms. Kushani, this is over to you. Thank you very much, Darshika. Good afternoon, friends. Who chose to challenge. It is indeed a privilege to address you today on the occasion of International Women's Day 2021. So at the very outset, let me express my deep thanks to Professor Lakshman R. Batavala, President of the Institute of Chartered Professional Managers of Sri Lanka, for giving me this wonderful opportunity. I have been requested by the organizers of this event to make an inspirational address to the participants. And I am happy to share my personal experience, which I believe will help inspire you to continue along the trajectory of your careers. I must alert you, however, that giving you inspiration on your onward journey will stem from how I overcame challenges all along the way as my path to be a deputy secretary general in parliament was not at all a rosy one. But I am proud that I embarked on this journey and have come a long way amidst struggle and strife to be in the position that I am in today. So I hope the thorns along the way to spur you on in this asymmetrical journey to success will not deter you as many men have a historical advantage over us. But I assure you with hard work, tenacity to cling to the slippery slopes across our paths, walking steady and straight across the crooked bridge, you will all get there. When I started taking my career aspirations more seriously, I had already worked in both private and public sectors for a few years initially. I then realized I would like to engage in legislative work and join parliament. I, would enter the parli I could enter the parliamentary service in 1999, having got to a highly competitive examination followed by an interview. However, I did my research on the demand side of the opportunity that could come my way and realized that a lower degree would certainly be an advantage. I, however, was a science graduate of the University of Colombo. My studies initially being interrupted unfortunately due to the insurrection in 1987. So having had a late start, I switched my focus from science to law. After working in parliament for a few years, having taken with me the learning in the science faculty to strengthen my studies in the legal sector. By that time, however, I was also a mother of three sons, very energetic, very feisty, and growing up too fast. This did not deter me in chartering the to unknown area of academic adventure. With some support from my very busy husband, who also enjoyed a very hectic professional career, I launched on studying for my LLB at the Open University of Sri Lanka. Juggling a job, a home, and my studies, 
not at all easy, I must say, but very doable. Please remember that the harder you work at something, the better you get at it. So hard work always pays off. You have to also take a calculated risk like I did. Knowing well that my domestic duty may not diminish. And yet my workload can always increase as will the demands through academic preparation for my degree. But I made a choice and I stuck with it to plot on to the end. Tenacity therefore also pays off and is critical to this journey. The world is watching, your colleagues are, and so is your family. Some of them waiting to see you fall and family of course to spur you on. List, you retract, stumble or fall. Maybe I was the one of those luckier ones who had family support to do this. Others are not so lucky, but I still tell you, this is all worth the experience and many vistas of opportunity will come your way. Next, I suggest you try to do a job that stimulates you and one you like. That way, it's your job. It's a passion and a commitment you will not let go at any cost. What I find, however, may inspire you most is what happened in the aftermath of this space journey to the top. From my job in the administration department as a deputy principal officer, I decided on completion of my law degree to venture into a higher parliamentary position. As you may know, this particular service is a closed service and it was a privilege for me to aspire to join the service. My attempts to secure a position in the hierarchy were successful. After my very first attempt, I was positioned as the Assistant Secretary General in the year 2012. However, despite the fact that there were many women in the service, it was not easy for us women to make our way in Parliament. Sometimes the journey from the entrance is a challenge. I would feel that there were questioning lenses upon as to how did I get in, did I cheat, did I bribe the hierarchy to make it into parliament, so like that. Maybe I was conscious of the attitude about women and sensitivity and overreacting. But as you know, time tells the truth. So a few weeks prior to an after appointment to the post of Assistant Secretary General, in this prestigious, well-reputed service, I found memes, cartoons, and doodling being circulated. They were of me, dressed up like a cabaret artist, performing in the skimpiest attire. I felt totally in insulted, humiliated, and depressed initially. In addition, they got certain newspapers to publish fake articles with respect to my education and qualifications. However, I had a very strong and understanding senior mentors in the Secretariat of Parliament who gave me advice and strengthened me to carry on. I also told my family, lest they heard it from third parties. My husband and parents and parents-in-law were very understand. And they stood by me and urged me to continue unabated. We women are strong, yes, but at times evil legs could be promoted by men and women both who are as low as they can be. It is important we have at least one or a few people, if we are lucky, a superior in the office. 
to go to and seek advice, counseling, or just have a conversation to heal his state, like we all need to do. So insiders who had resisted my legitimate entry into the parliamentary service tried every trick in the book to ensure that I got disgusted on my job and gave up. But I was determined that I tenaciously cling to my opportunity, a rare one, and earn my career in parliament. I went through hell and back. However, I have to admit there were a group of friends and colleagues who were very supportive and kept me going on, as did my family. And I am so happy that I did not ever give up. The thoughts of giving up did cross my mind at times. I am here today, stronger than ever, with the pledge to not only keep my job, but help other women in parliament to move ahead with dignity. On the 7th of March, during a workshop to mark the International Women's Day, I am happy to note that a member of the Women's Caucus of Parliament announced publicly that having me as a strong woman as the Deputy Secretary General of Parliament has been and is a great strength to the 12 women parliamentarians in this ninth parliament. I was mildly surprised at this public acknowledgement, but also very humbled at the announcement and grateful to them for taking me into their team to make a difference in the lives of women and other underrepresented groups in my country. I urge you all to support one another, to have faith in yourselves as individual women and as a collective of women in the world of work, to stay strong, stay tenacious and move ahead with passion and compassion, to realize your vision for yourselves, for your family, for your organization, and for your country. May I quote the famous young lady, Malala Yousafzai, the youngest Nobel Prize winner, as I end my story. There are two powers in the world. One is the sword and the other is the pen. There is a third power stronger than both, that of women. So I rest my case here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Kushani, for your wonderful insight, which was really a great honor to listen to you in this afternoon. So now we are moving to the interesting session which our eminent panelists will share their views, learnings, and discuss the role of professional women and how they have chosen to challenge corporate glass ceiling gender biases during their corporate journey. Let me, without further ado, introduce our resource panel. Start with the session facilitator. So today, our session facilitator, Ms. Ganga Kumudani Fernando. Ms. Ganga, Fernando is a senior lecturer attached to the Department of Finance, Faculty of Management and Finance, University of Colombo. She has obtained her bachelor's degree in business administration with a first class honor from the University of Colombo and also MBA in finance from the same university. She has served as a mentor for both CIMA Global Business Challenge and CFA Research Challenge since 2011. Her teams have brought glory to the university by securing the Sri Lankan championships three times and five times respectively in CIMA and CFA competitions. Moreover, in the year 2014, her team became global champions in CIMA GBC. She's also a Toastmasters since 2011. Since then, she has held over eight positions at the club, area, division, and district levels. There are many accolades achieved by her during her leadership journey as a Toastmaster. Once she was recognized as the most outstanding Toastmaster and area director of District 82 to symbolize her uttering contribution to the Toastmasters fraternity. 
She's a passionate leader and a mentor to many. She's also a very active finance professional and a facilitator to the Columbus Stock Exchange Investor Forum since 2012. She's also become an entrepreneur in 2018, and she's the founder of Ophi Research, and she's also an educational consultant to London School of Social Enterprise UK since 2020. And she's a fellow member of CPM Sri Lanka and serves as co-opted member to the governing council of CPM Sri Lanka since 2019. So today, our first panelist, Ms. Shifara Farooq Ismail, Chief Executive Officer, Viber Pintback Private Limited. Shifara Farooq is the Group Chief Executive Officer at Viber Pintback Private Limited, managing four diversified manufacturing organizations which are Nippon PVC Holdings, Nippon Toys and Helmets, Nippon Bags Manufacturer Subsidiaries. She was the Chief Accountant at the Nippon Group of Companies and the Senior Finance Manager at Pass Research and Consultancy Private Limited. She was a Senior Ac Auditor Cum Accountant in Ernest & Young. Shifara is a Gold Award winner for Corporate Leadership at the Top 50 Professional Career Women Awards 10th edition, Sri Lanka and Maldives 2020 by Women in Management in Partnership in IFSA, a member of the World Bank Group and the Government of Australia. She's awarded the Best Team Leader of the Year, Past Research and Consultancy Private Limited. She's also awarded as the Best Corporate Profile Provider for the Year, Past Research and Consultancy Private Limited. Shifara is a fellow member of CPN Sri Lanka and holding the membership of CMA Australia and MyBiz Partners. She has conducted various researches on industry productions and manufacturing organizations while participating in community development, women empowerment, and child education programs. She was the host speaker as a successful career woman at USAID Vega Biz. Next, we have Mrs. Bonali Pereira, Director, Co-Founder, U-Turn International. Bonali Pereira is one of the directors of U-Turn International, the Institute of Business Consultancy, Training, Coaching, and Counseling. She has successfully built her career by playing multidimensional roles in the fields of human resource management, operation, talent development, personality development, customer service, teaching, and training while being a transformational leader and a mentor by interacting with many diverse organizations across different layers in Sri Lanka's multidiscipline corporate sector. With the exposure she has gained from the title of Mrs. Earth Sri Lanka 2019, she has passionately engaged herself in community development activities by serving as the women empowerment activist through her exemplary personal and professional lifestyle. So today our third panelist is Dr. Buddhima Subasingha. Dr. Buddhima is an academic researcher and a journalist and a scholar. The youngest PhD holder of South Asia who graduated at 24 years of age from the University of Peradeniya in the field of cybersecurity computer science. She holds 10 years of experience in her academic career and also a decade in media as a presenter of Sri Lanka Rupwahani Corporation. She is the former head computer science at the School of Computing and currently serves as the head student life and engagement at the National Institute of Business Management. She was the Toastmasters International Leadership and Training Institute Chair District 82, Sri Lanka during 2017 and 2018. Currently, she serves as the Area Director of Area G5, Toastmasters International District 82. She was the President of NIBM Toastmasters Club as well. She was also awarded the Emerging ICT Leader of the Year National Excellence Award at Infotel 2017. She was internationally recognized at the Top 50 Women Awards 2018 for her leadership excellence in information technology. 
She's a fellow member of CPM Sri Lanka. She serves as the task force member of the policy formulation of the new education reforms of Ministry of Education of Sri Lanka. She's also a keynote speaker at many national and international forums who empowers youth and women in the field of leadership, communication, and engineering. Last but not least, our final panelist, Ms. Pimrose Mascarenas. Ms. Pimrose was the Director, Administration HR Consultant at Ramtop Enterprise, now joined Pimrose Enterprise, a real estate company focusing on commercial lands as managing partner holding position of direct operations. Started her career in the public and semi-government sector, worked in plantation ministry, and later was the personal assistant to the Ministry Secretary of Public Administration, Parliamentary Affairs, Home Affairs, and Plantation Industries. After 16 years of service, further served two decades as HR and administration professional in the private sector in industries such as hospitality, garments, ceramics, education, building material manufacturing, etc. Also worked in an NGO, Habitat for Humanity, South Asian region. Primrose is a life member of Organization of Professional Association Sri Lanka. Chartered member of Chartered Institute of Personal Management, Sri Lanka, serving as the lead consultant and invigilator. Being a fellow member and a council member of the Institute of Chartered Professional Managers of Sri Lanka, serves as the chairperson in membership committee. She's also a fellow member of United Kingdom Association of Professionals. She's a justice of peace for all island, volunteered at the Sri Lanka Police Kirilapana Kalampo 6 Division as a Secretary of Civil Defense Committee and Drug Preventing Committee. Also, I would like to invite Ms. Kushani Rohanadira, Chief of Staff and Deputy Secretary General of Parliament to join the panel discussion. With these introductions, I would like to invite Ms. Ganga to hand over the proceedings to handle the panel discussion. Yes, thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, I warmly welcome all the panelists and the participants to today's discussion. We live in a society where women have been given a due place. Sometimes this due place even is better to mere equality. However, still they are exit unseen, unreachable barriers, which we call glass ceilings. We women always choose to challenge through breaking that glass ceiling. To signify and honor the Women's Day, the Institute of Chartered Professional Managers in Sri Lanka has chosen eight of its elite female members. As always, CPM leads the way. Be all. It is indeed an honor to be the session moderator to a very outstanding group of women. I would like to start the discussion from our key presenter, Mrs. Kushani Rohanadira. Mrs. Kushani. Yes. It is, it is such an inspiring story. You said that you joined the parliament in 1999. And 20 years later, you have reached the zenith of success. As women, I believe we have unique qualities when compared to our counterpart. And you are a lady who proved it. I would like to ask from you, what values of yours contributed to stand strong throughout your journey? How did you gain those values? Was Ganga. I think I have values such as patience, commitment, then uh, respect for others, and dedication in me. And I should uh, also state that I was greatly influenced by the character of my mother. She is an exceptional woman with multiple talents. So, in fact, uh, 
in fact i was lucky to have got a gifted parents my home was a lovely place to live and it was always filled with love and warmth besides my parents always taught me not to discriminate people against their ethnicity religion or social status and uh, during the childhood we used to have a small group of friends from the neighborhood and they came from different backgrounds there were rich uh, families there were poor families but together we shared our books our toys and even the food and snack whatever we had and even to date we are very good friends so uh, that way as i grew up it was always easy for me to move along with people from all walks of life and uh, also gain their respect and so these values have helped me immensely uh, to resolve many conflicts even in my workplace and uh, i could gather cooperation i could uh, get uh, cooperation of employees at different levels in order to have a smooth functioning of uh, my work Yes, thank you, Mrs. Kushani. I completely agree with you. Mother plays a bigger role in our life, and I still feel I have survived this far because of the quality that she instilled in me when I was a child. Great message to all the women out there. I also would like to raise another question from you. You are blessed with a strong, a strong background. In my opinion. in your opinion how important is the education and the family background in pursuing your career well of course that also plays a very big role in whatever career that will that you will pursue and in fact ganga i was so lucky to have the support of my family throughout my journey to the top when i was small i had my parents always beside me giving me the moral support and i had a good education and added values uh, that have been imparted to me by my parents and after marriage uh, uh, fortunately i got a good husband who could understand myself and who was a pillar of strength to my journey and uh, uh, of course my parents my parents in law then even my in-laws and my brother they were always uh, standing by me during the most difficult times of my life and i consider them to be the biggest asset and the biggest strength i had during my journey ganga yes yes mrs kushani yes we as women always blessed with maybe with your background or maybe maybe with certain qualities of yes like so we know what we have been blessed with so with that i would like to move my attention to another panelist mrs shifara smile mrs shifara yes you have a number of years of experience in the manufacturing sector and is currently holding the position of ceo at wimber print fact recently you also became one of gold award winner in recognition of your corporate leadership by women in management in partnership with ifc i would like to know how you chose to challenge when you climbed the corporate ladder in a sector where women representation is low yeah thank you ganga for that significant question well uh, i started breaking the challenges from my childhood i never thought uh, i am different from men in the university life uh, as well as in the early career life i was uh, driven by mission to succeed on my uh, journey towards a career achievement like anyone else i experienced so many issues uh, but i never gave up like any other successful woman i have courage i maintain persistence and i develop self confidence i think uh, for any women 
there are three important elements to become successful that is uh, courage persistency and the self confidence it is true climbing the corporate ladder in a sector where it has low female representation is really challenging but i would say it takes patience and resilience which goes hand in hand with confidence i have looked out into my future career and identified the skills that i need when i felt i was lacking i continued to search for the opportunities to grow myself i been open to get out of my comfort zone and challenge myself with a hard stuff uh, actually ganga i must tell you something very important every time when i did explore myself to understand the underlying underlying reasons for why the situation or the person is my obstacle many times i found the answer was me actually the answer was me i was the obstacle and i thought i must change i must grow actually i must like those challenges women must learn to be assertive than become aggressive at times of challenges you have to be assertive after you listen and you have to be interactive after you listen those are something i have i i have learned over a period and few of the strategies i used to go forward thank you yes thank you mrs shifara so i cannot let you go after you are explaining sort of very thought provoking ideas yes that is indeed true i also felt most of the time we look for the obstacle out there and we try to solve the problems by looking at the outer part of us but the real problem is lies within us so you have realized it when you climb your corporate ladder and you are an exception but it is a little bit uh, disappointed or rather i would say we have seen in the, in our society we have lot of women they give up their career aspirations do you think that there are exists some kind of conflict between their personal goals and their career goals if so why yeah not once uh, but uh, several times i have had hard times i think uh, this is not something you need to me probably after the marriage after having the first child or after settling down in the career generally everyone become complacent it is true uh, that uh, life won't always be a perfect equilibrium at times uh, you do have to choose between your career goals and personal goals in order to achieve a balance but uh, i always felt i must achieve more in my career and it should not impact my personal goal either i think determination is very important my peers back me with their maximum support and also my husband was always with me we planned everything together at hard times we shared responsibilities i think planning is everything to make your personal and professional life happier you must manage your emotions uh, i don't think that a busy and successful career woman fall in achieving that is failing achieving the personal aspiration and i definitely say the other way thank you yes words come from a corporate leader and she said yes there are can exist conflict but it's up to us to find that equilibrium you will never find the perfect equilibrium but what matters is just to lead your way and every time you will see a way out thank you for those thoughts mrs shifara i will come back to you again a little while what i see is women are all around us there are no limits when they choose to challenge she was crowned as mrs earth 2019 in sri lanka she is also a professional women woman and a mother mrs bonali ferreira yes yes 
Now, I would like to ask from you, how did you choose to challenge yourself in the journey of achieving the crown of Mrs. Earth? Okay, uh, I'll start my uh, answer like this. Actually, uh, I'm inborn leader from my childhood, from my school time. So I, I was really keen to gain leadership always because I see I'm the person who can take the message to the community, even my school community. I was there, I was always there to give them good challenges and the messages. So because of that, I had a hidden love. I had hidden dreams in my mind, but having completed my studies and all the school journeys and extracurricular activities, more things, dancing, singing, arts and drama and everything, doing all of things at once, I finished my A-levels with mathematics as well. I completed my degree as well. Then I came to uh, the, my life stage, like where I got uh, married to a banker, but unfortunately, one time I met with an accident. That time my child was about 10 months. That was actually a pressure cooker blast. I lost all my natural skin, natural appearance, and all my dreams I lost. But I told you I had a dream in my mind to challenge, to choose to challenge. So what I did was I stood up to choose challenge, choose to challenge against the challenges what I had that time. So because of one of my friend's request, I applied for this uh, pageant, this is a Sri Lanka pageant, and uh, very successfully using my strategically using a feminine strength, I was able to win this title. So there I used feminine strengths. I very particularly said feminine strengths, what I had and what I'm currently also having. So not only the title, I got three mini titles as well. This is personality, this is intelligent, as well as Mrs. Fitness. As a mother, as a mother, I was able to win that title with three mini titles. So I was really proud about me. And uh, do you think uh, why, I, uh, why I choose to challenge myself for this kind of a title? Why? Because I wanted to give a message as a role model, give a message to the community. When I become a model, role model, people will listen to me. Because of that, I'm not a politician. If I'm a politician, so exactly, so I can go to the community. But what the strategy I used is to become a role model as a winning title winner. So I used this title to become a role model and I want you to take a message to the community. So I'm working on that now. So it's, it's it was a really good challenge but I did it using my strengths. So that's my answer. How did I challenge it? Yes. Yes, it's indeed been challenging, but yet you have beautifully achieved it, Mrs. Bonali. And I see you have a lot of power in, you have a lot of power and the power of our mind is unlimited. So what I realize is by listening to you, once again, we proved that term where there is a will, there is a way. Yes, but however, it is not easy for women to rise above breaking some social norm. You, you have chose the completely different way compared to the most of uh, ordinary of us would select. So what sort of experience did you have after earning the title? Fantastic question. Thank you for the question, Ganga. Actually, uh, after winning this title, I had to face a lot of challenges, numerous things, especially the people who were around me. So they raised different questions. They asked, why did I take part in that? Uh, why did I take part in that, that kind of a pageant? So it's a shame. So they said kind of those words, it's a shame. And they asked uh, what I gained what I gain at the final, finally, and um, some insulting as, appreciations as well. Like what I did was I took all these things really positively because I did what I wanted to have in my life. 
what I want you to have in my life, not for others, not because of others, because of me, because of the dream that I had in my mind, I did it. So the strategy I use in my mind is the positivity and the sensitivity. So I use these strengths within myself to face those challenges and the questions raised around me. So I successfully face them. And uh, I'm currently like this and uh, working on working on my own dreams further. Yes, thank you. Thank you again for such uh, inspirational words. This is Bonali. And uh, not only you're working on your dreams and you have proved and you have walked the talk. So I would, I, I have the feeling after listening to you, you have already achieved certain dreams of yours. Yes. Yes. The women power is unlimited. And when professional women choose to challenge, they have more scope within their professional career and they can find infinite number of opportunities and infinite number of ways if you really if we really wanted to contribute to the society of course when i was listening to you i felt yes it doesn't matter the thousand criticisms comes on your way if you have one that positive remark you still can move forward that one positive remarks is equal to thousand criticisms so you can overcome it that's the power of positivity and i believe we being women it is our sole responsibility to always bring out positivity because we are also part of society and we represent the majority too so the responsibility lies within us once again, thanks, Mrs. Buna, uh, Mrs. Bonali. I would like to turn my attention to another a special panelist. We say education is weapon for women, especially to break the glass ceiling in social, cultural, and corporate world. My question goes to Dr. Buddhima Subhasinghe. Dr. Buddhima? Yes. 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 Dr. Buddhima, you obtained your doctorate at the age of 24. How did you choose to challenge in achieving the doctorate at such a young age? Well, Ganga, if I speak a little bit about my life, I, I'd like to start it off this way. I believe uh, to life, there are two important days the day you and me, the day we've been gifted to this world and the day we find the meaning why, the purpose of our life. I believe in self-discovery, finding the purpose of my life. And if I take a look back, it all started when I was two and a half years old. That's when I was, uh, that's when I entered into a school and to my preschool, my, both my parents, my mom and dad were super busy parents. My dad worked at Sri Lanka Customs, mom at the Ministry of Higher Education of Sri Lanka. And they wanted me to start school at a very, very early age. And things were not very pleasant. I got bullied big time in school. And like you told, at one point, I had to realize that education was the only weapon that was going to change my world, that was going to help me stand up for myself. So however the case it is, I wanted to be a medical doctor. I had a dream to become a medical doctor. But then eventually, when I was going through my secondary education, I realized I was in an international school. Back then there were no opportunities for us to get into a national university in terms of the National Medical College. Uh, unlike we do have those opportunities right now in the international schools. So I was thinking to myself, Udima, are you going to stop here? Is this going to be the end of it? So when I was 13 years old, I sat for my ordinary level exam. Uh, when I was 15 was when I completed my advanced level examination. When I was 16, I was about to join university. And then I decided life is not going to end 
without being a medical doctor. And definitely I'm going to pursue my career in a different field. And that was when I researched a lot and I found that computer science was a field that I can definitely make use out of technologies for the future and the and computer science is definitely going to make an impact in the world out there. So I thought, why not? I take it up. So I did my major in computer science and software engineering at Sri Lanka Institute of Information Technology and Curtin University of Australia. And then I come back and decide to do my PhD. Again, uh, like you know, when it comes to a girl in Sri Lanka, we have a written story. We need to finish school, we need to get into university, and then we have to get married, and uh, we have to get out, get into a job, and we need to have kids, so on and so forth. So uh, when I was 19 years old was when I finished my double degree, and then I joined the academic staff of uh, Sri Lanka Institute of Information Technology, and I was lecturing for a couple of years. And then I decide that I'm going to give up on my job and convert into full-time PhD and pursue my uh, dream of becoming a PhD in computer science. But then uh, when I speak to my parents, they never liked the idea of giving up a good job with a good pay, so on and so forth. So again, I had to go through a very tough time to convince them. And I somehow I was able to convince them and take the decision to convert my PhD from part-time to full-time and go for it. I was doing it for a cause. I was doing it with a purpose. I wanted to inspire many more youth out there. I wanted to achieve my PhD at a younger age. But then, then when I took that decision, I came across more barriers where a lot of people started questioning Budima, you, you're doing a PhD at this age. What are you even doing? Don't you have plans to get yourself established in your career? You gave up on your job. What is wrong with you? When are you even getting married? Very, very going to end up in life. Friends, family, relatives, so many people had thousands of questions, but then I, I realized that I need to own the decision that I take. And, and even today, whatever the decisions that I take in my life, I own the decisions and I make sure that I write the story of my life. Yes. I think that's very important for a lady. So the, the, the decision that I took to give up on my career at one point and to complete my PhD full time, I worked very hard. I still remember there were days yes. which I did not see a sunrise or a sunset, worked hard, achieved it finally at the age of 24. Yes, so Dr. I think Dr. Buddhima Subhasinghe, you had faced a lot of challenges. Yes, that's indeed true. But what I really like out of many that you mentioned, you said that you were talking to yourself and have the, so what I really feel is, yes, if we really want to follow our dreams, don't try to have the harmony with the people outside there, have the harmony within yourself. That's a perfect fit. Then you will be able to follow your dreams and your dreams won't be a dream anymore. That will become reality as what Dr. Buddhima has achieved. Another thing that you mentioned, uh, Dr. Buddhima, you said when you were a child, you were being bullied during your childhood. In very briefly, very, can you tell me how you face it? Well, yes. Um, actually, Ganga, like I told you, uh, I started schooling when I was two and a half years old and life became terrific, terrible. Uh, school was worse than hell to me. I, I used to be this kid who came back home crying and asking my mom that I should be homeschooled. Uh, but then this it was this prize giving uh, ceremony of grade two that really changed my life. I was seated right at the back. I didn't have any award or certificate or a prize. I was the 13th or the 15th in the class or even worse. And back in the days, we were graded, we were given positions, we had prize awarding ceremonies. I don't know. Now things are different when it comes to the education system. However, I was seated right at the back watching those kids getting up on stage and grabbing those trophies and certificates and prizes and the parents who are seated in the audience 
they would speak to the other parents around and they would say, look, look, that's my daughter. That's my son who is getting that certificate, that trophy. And they become so happy. And I was watching how that kid runs to the stage and grabs the trophy and how happy he or she becomes. I was thinking, Udima, what are you even doing with your life? You've created a difficult situation out of your life and you're always complaining. You don't want to go to school and you want to be homeschooled instead. And I was thinking, Budima, are you going to stop here? Or are you going to change your life? And that day, Ganga, it wasn't the same me who walked back home. I was determined. I was confident. I was courageous. I was ready to change. I knew that I'm going to definitely bring back my parents also someday to a prize giving and make them happy. I knew that I was also going to be a happier kid like one of them. I was yes. determined. I started competing with myself. Yes, Dr. Budhima, once again, the self-realization has helped you to face that challenge. And I believe, yes, now you had that inner motivation from your childhood. So that must be a one reason that you're always leading the forefront by claiming I'm the first to achieve and I'm first to get that uh, particular recognition. I'm sure now, having realized your social responsibility also, you're paving so many others also to overcome these bullied and achieve their whatever their dreams in their lives. One last question, and I need a very short answer for that. Yes, you achieved everything at the age of 24. Got the PhD, you are doctorate. Once we have everything, we achieved everything in our life, sort of in terms of especially the educational and all the social status by the early age, age, we tend to think that, yes, we are well established and no more challenges in life. Then you start after 24, age of 24, you started your the working career also. How it has been challenging for you as a youth professional in the uh, working career? Well, I think uh, Ganga, uh, two important things that has really helped me out. It's not always easy to work with people who are double your age or even more and making sure they all agree to what you say and getting your opinions across and moving forward along with the team. So I think I truly believe that emotional intelligence and and team spirit and teamwork has really played an important part in my life. I believe that if you give the opportunity for a team to converse their opinions, and if you are ready to respect one another, you will be able to come to a clear agreement along with your team and make sure you drive the team to achieve the organizational goal as well as your team's goals. And also, I truly believe that if your team shines, that means you shine, Ganga. It's, it's not a world of I that we live in. It's not a world of isolation that we live in. We work with people. We need people. Your network is, after, your, after all, your net worth. So we work with a lot of people always. And it's important that we understand that if we value and respect them, what they are, and what they're ready to give back to us, definitely we can get the most out of them. And we can come across our decisions by negotiating effectively with them to come yes. up with clear cut decisions in life. I think that has really helped me achieve. Yes. Real, the I'm life. sure that uh, the real challenge again does start after getting all these uh, achievements. So it means the challenge never ends in our life. Thank you, Dr. Budhima, for such inspiration thoughts and sharing your life experience with all of us. Now I would like to turn into another important personality. We women play multiple roles. Not only that, she has been a professional woman over 40 years. She's a mother and also blessed with grandchildren too. Mrs. Primrose. Thank you, Ganga. And you are an unstoppable character. I have, so I'm really privileged 
to have the ask this question from you can you tell me how you choose to challenge yourself when you were involved in different industries yes thanks ganga and thanks president and the council member uh, for inviting me today for this discussion the past 40 years of my career has been equally challenging as well as enjoyable uh, during my career as you explained i have continuously kept challenging myself and going in search of new experiences that has helped me to evolve as a professional and individual being able to work across the government private and ngo sectors as well as several industries those has helped me to understand people and their challenges better and it has immensely helped me to grow as a person and a woman myself i feel it's always important to sometimes embrace change take up a challenge and step out of your comfort zone in order to grow often women are more hesitant to do it than men mainly due to their commitment Uh, there is a time in life where you work for an employer or to a company for yourself for your family and then for the society and for the country it has been equally fulfilling for me during different stages in my life and despite the challenges that comes with life life also presents us with many opportunities if we are open to them as the famous saying goes if there is a will there is always a way so the sense of determination and the positive attitude i have always had those that helped me to keep going even during the tough times yes <laughs> thank you for once again uh, reminding all of us the importance of having the positive attitudes and then again if you have a will always there is a way which is primrose i have seen many of our women tend to hold in the middle of their career due to the responsibilities associated with family life especially with the motherhood so how do you fulfill uh, the demand of different roles being a professional women so how did you face all this uh, of course i have had to make several shifts in my career from time to time as i had to take many different roles in life as a student as a mother and later as a grandmother but i have always made sure to give importance to work life balance and to prioritize on my family when needed but was also determined to continue to grow in my career as well in any way possible that was yeah yes also the support i received from my family has helped me immensely in my journey my husband was a marine engineer and they are who was overseas most of the time but he always had faith in me and encouraged me to continue my studies ever be it for me to be independent and to grow also uh, then uh, being able to work in several sectors has also presented me the opportunity of witnessing how certain women stand up to this challenge even better than me so especially in the estate sector if you take that several young mothers work and engage in hard labor during pregnancy and soon after giving birth which they are newborn in the crèche sometimes being able to experience such situations could have helped me to take these uh, such challenges later in my life that's what i thought also yes. as i previously said the work life balance has always been important to me that with my husband being abroad for most of the time i had to have a close relationship my with my daughter as she grew and had to be there for her, her whenever she needed me 
Uh, and as the, she grew up to be a professional and a working mother herself, then I knew as alternative, I chose to take shift in my career to help her look after my grandson so that she could continue with her career. This was the time I chose to focus on my business and get more involved with the institutional work in order to support them as it gave me a sense of fulfillment. Sometimes in life, these things are important. Yes. Thank you, Mrs. Primrose, for that uh, idea. And in fact, I really like what you said that uh, we see uh, sometimes women breastfeed. Uh, the, it doesn't matter that you become a mother, but still, if you really want to continue, you can continue to be a professional woman. Uh, still fulfilling the responsibility of your motherhood. So this reminds me what our keynote presenter said that uh, Malala said the, uh, st uh, the strong power is the women. That is something I also always believe. We always have the power to rise up to the situation. It, it doesn't matter what the challenges, I think all the profession professional women have chosen to challenge with these multiple roles, being professionals while achieving uh, everything and still maintaining the equilibrium surrounding us. Thank you for your wonderful thought, Mrs. Primrose. We also have another panelist. She joined a little later, Mrs. Shashika. Mrs. Shashika, are you there? I think I can't hear from her. Mrs. Shashika. I'm sure there have been, uh, yeah, it's uh, heavily raining cats and dogs. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we just listened to the success stories of seven, actually five elite women and how they choose to challenge throughout the journey. So that is really, uh, I would say it's, it's very thought provoking because all our uh, panelists highlighted the importance of certain aspects. What really strike in my life, my mind is, yes, uh, the achieving, uh, the have the harmony within yourself and being self-focused when you really wanted to achieve the things and other, the other message was having the positivity. At the same time, we cannot forget the support that you are receiving from your family. That also uh, matters a lot when our women are moving up in the corporate ladder. Yes. Before I move into the next round, I would like to remind all of our participants that you can send your questions via chat box to our panelists. I also would like to take this opportunity to remind that CPM is one of the best institute. They always pave the way for women, professional women to be better equipped with their skills and the required competencies. So this is a yet another initiative that they have taken. So I, I would like to use this opportunity to warmly welcome all our members uh, in the sense all our participants, the CPM is a best place if you really wanted to challenge yourself and then again, grow up in your professional life, you can come and join with us. Yes, with that having said that, let's try to explore the thoughts of our elite women further and see what they have sh to share with us as their final thought. Yes, I have Mrs. Kushani Rohanadira again on the screen. Recently, I was listening to a, uh, a speech that was uh, the speech done by Hillary Clinton in 1995 at her UN speech. She said, we should no longer separate women's rights from human rights. 
However, even after 25 years, we have not been able to achieve it. Mrs. Kushan, can you briefly tell us which law reforms have been instated to protect the right of women? When you're talking about the legal reforms, uh, Ganga, you of course, I, I will have to, uh, I will have to give the credit to the Women Parliamentarians Caucus and the Sectoral Oversight Committee on Women and Gender, which was functioning uh, during the during the eighth Parliament, that was the last Parliament. Then together they have they have done a lot. They have. Uh, Done tremendous work in this aspect, and actually they have presented private members' bills in the year 2020 to amend certain discriminatory laws against women. So, talking about the discriminatory laws, I can just uh, cite few examples, Ganga. Like uh, one is this uh, Land Development Ordinance of 1935, and this particular ordinance eliminates women from succession rights. If there are male children in the family, it will always give priority in succession to the eldest male child, whereas the daughters are deprived of that right. So this is grossly discriminatory and we need to correct and rectify these uh, disparities. And then uh, under personal laws, Especially the case of Alamelo, a married woman cannot sell their property or dispose of her uh, immovable property without the written consent of her husband. So that is again highly discriminatory, I suppose. Then we have the uh, Muslim Marriages and Divorce Act, which does not have a minimum age for marriage. Even girls of 12 years can be given in marriage before passing judge. So these are these are uh, the discrimination that women have to face. And uh, the Women Parliamentarians Caucus has already uh, sent a proposal to the expert committee on constitutional reforms uh, regarding uh, gender justice, gender equality, to increase women representation, especially in, this, uh, in the parliamentary committees as well, like the public finance committee, because right now we don't have even a single woman in that uh, important committee, and like the elections commission, you know, there are the, the, the membership has been increased to five members, but uh, all uh, five members are males, and uh, even the expert committee uh, um, that is looking into the, the, the constitutional reforms, that has a composition of nine members and just one woman among them. So that is the, that's the composition uh, where you uh, go into the depth of these uh, uh, important institutions and uh, uh, commissions. So we wanted to increase the representation and of course protection of uh, rights of children as well as differently abled persons. And uh, this is currently exploring the possibility of ratification of uh, Convention 190 of ILO. Uh, that is uh, with regard to elimination of uh, sexual harassment and violence in the world of birth. So that again is a big challenge. We have to bring about to bring in uh, certain uh, uh, important policy changes and legal reforms. Uh, thus, uh, place in the offense of sexual harassment uh, within the regime of labor law. Uh, currently, it is under the purview of the criminal law. So you know. The degree of proof is very high. So obviously, most women can't, they, they can't win their cases when they are harassed or subject to violence in workplaces. So these are the challenges and we are working on these. Uh,
Yes, Mrs. Kushani, after listening to you, what I realize is still, uh, we, we are one way we are blessed. Uh, the surrounding us, we don't experience much, but it's still there is a side that I actually, have. Actually, and, these are just a few Ganga. There are so many other acts to be amended. Yeah. Yeah, really so they are discriminated. So in reality, what I feel is, uh, what I personally have seen is maybe 5 or 10% of uh, uh, women who are really prosperous and moving forward, but out there, there are a lot. And I see a big vacuum there. Who can fill it? I think it is the duty of professional women. The people like Mrs. Kushani and uh, all others. So they are who are in forefront. We all, we all as a part of a society have the responsibility uh, to fulfill or contribute to that uh, particular act and to support, to re-implement uh, these uh, laws. Uh, because we see that, yes, we have law reforms, but to what extent are they being implemented? So that implementation can part cannot come without the support from the social system. That's what I believe. So Mrs. Kushani, I felt, yes, we have a lot of uh, law reforms, but still that cannot bring equality. What I realize is the human mentality stand as a glass ceiling when we are trying to achieve the balance. So what is your experience in this regard? How that can be addressed, Mrs. Kushani? Yes, of course you are correct, Ganga. Actually, we cannot achieve the expected, we can't achieve the expected results unless our mindsets are also changed. So this is a social issue that is uh, that, that has a challenge in implementation of law. However, there are multiple ways of, of overcoming this issue with the support of uh, uh, men and women both. And you know, uh, one aspect is you can introduce respect uh, from the very early childhood to the children and do not divide teaching approaches differently for girls and boys, uh, like we give pink for girls and blue for boys and separate toys like dolls for girls and cars for boys and let the boys and girls play together, eat together, study together. So the end result would be a very, very uh, productive result. And uh, in my opinion, I think these jobs also should not be segregated by stereotypes like those uh, that uh, receptionist should be women, feminine, pretty and fair, and uh, CEOs should not be women. <laughs> so we have to we have to really break the glass ceiling. Yes. But uh, in this aspect, I think Ganga teachers can do a lot because they can influence the children, influence generations. So introduce gender equality, and inclusion as compulsory subjects in teacher training. Uh, laws have to be there in their place. We can't dismiss laws. No. So however, we have to support implementation of those laws within our institutions uh, to utilize and to make uh, full use of these laws. Yes, thank you, Mrs. Kushani. Once again, I need to tell, yes. I really believe this is a snowballing effect. We group of people can start it and spread the message and there will be a lot of uh, come and join for that, uh, the, uh, the things that we are doing. So this is the part of our responsibility. So as she suggested, so let's try to do it because women plays a bigger role when it's come to the family. Everyone listen to the mother. So we all play that role. So that is where we can really start it. And let's try to break the glass ceiling in the mentality. And let's try to bring the justice to all aspects of life. That's another role of professional women. Thank you, Mrs. Kushani. And after all, Ganga, that the mother is the first teacher to her child, no, her baby. Yes. So she's our, our mentor, I think, in most cases. Yeah. yeah. Yes, Mrs. Kushani, and 
once again, I'll call upon you for one last time. Before that, let me move into the other one. Thank you, Mrs. Kushani again. Yeah. Mrs. Shifara. We were to Mrs. Shifara? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah, we were talking about glass ceiling and glass ceilings are unseen, unbreachable barriers. Breaking the glass ceiling is challenging. As a final thought for today, what is your advice to working women who attempt to grow in their own business and in workplace? Yes, sir. Actually, many women secretly feel inferior, especially when they see someone else succeed. We live in a culture that promotes comparisons. It is important not only to recognize other people's strengths, but to congratulate them on their accomplishment. My advices to working women are, uh, number one, each and every woman must encourage others to grow. Look uh, people in the eye, stand straight, shake hands firmly. Number two, we must understand growing higher is always painful. So, and therefore we must definitely develop the mindset we can manage our sex. Women must always uh, like taking up challenges to grow and prosper. Think outside the box. My fourth advice is to have a mentor. It can be a husband, a senior colleague, or even your mother. Uh, about accepting the challenges, to break the challenges, one must accept the challenges and learn to develop the skills. We got to break them. This can be assertive skills, communication skills, emotional intelligence, stress management, so my final advice is uh, women should never ever put themselves down. They must be patient, persistent, and progressive. I would, yes. uh, yeah, small thing. Thank you. I actually, I, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Mrs. Shifara. And yeah. you know, once again, proved my factor. And when I was always telling my student to take the challenge at the university, they all say, no, I can't. And they always point out someone else. Then I ask, yes. if you don't accept, you can do it. Who else will accept that you can do it? First, accept who you are. Then the rest is possible. Thank you for establishing such a beautiful message with the audience. Thanks once thank again. You. Yes, Mrs. Bonali? Yes. Yes, I remember you also highlighted the fact that being in charge of your success. Can you briefly share your final thought with all of us? What is your advice you can give to yes. women? Right. Uh, I'll start like this. Women, women are really powerful. So they are multitaskers. Their positivity is high. Their emotional intelligence is high. So having said that, I want to make sure that women are strong enough to carve their career goals as well as life goal very creatively, very creatively using their strengths, using their powers. So my last message is don't stop learning. Try to learn as much as possible. Try to gain experience as, as much as possible. Don't stop your career from now. Whatever the things you are doing in your life as a mother, as a housewife, as an entrepreneur, a professional, go forward. Carve your goals for yourself and creatively. That's my message for all women. Yes, and she has walked the talk and she is telling, don't stop, continue. Thank you, Mrs. Bonali, once again for that inspirational message. I would like to move into Dr. Buddhima Subhasinghe. Dr. Buddhima? Yes, Kanda. As a final thought, what is your take home message? Well, I believe that a woman is a full circle. Within her is the power to create, to nurture, and to transform. I think we've brainstormed a lot. And I'd like to uh, tell to all the women out there that it's important to understand that we need to become skill-driven, insight-driven, and tech-driven for us to really achieve ourselves in the future. Because the world is transforming, the world is changing, and the world is embracing technology. And like Professor mentioned at the beginning as well, it's important that we embrace technology, accept 
the change that is inevitable and move forward. Let us not stereotype by age, gender, or any other glass ceilings for that matter. We need to break the glass ceiling and truly believe that you are phenomenally a woman and a phenomenal woman you are. Yes, thank you, Dr. Buddhima Subhasinghe. That's such a wonderful thought. Break the glass ceiling and be believe in yourself. What a beautiful message. Yes, I would like to turn my attention toward Mrs. Primrose. I would say- uh, Mrs. Primrose, yes, yes, you have an ocean of experience in the palm of your hand with 40 years of experience, what is your advice that you can share as final thought for everyone out there? Uh, Ms. Ganga, that uh, being a woman presents up with many opportunities along with the challenges. And I believe that we women have some unique strengths such as the ability to be empathetic and the ability to multitask uh, and the ability to bear anything, being the woman. It's important for every woman to always have goals for herself, her family, as this will always help her to focus on, uh, focus on development. Uh, it's important for a woman to continue to believe in herself and continue to learn and grow as an individual without setting limits upon themselves due to life's challenges. As these challenges and turning points in life are the exactly what will help us grow as individuals. Uh, if we face them positively and wisely can be the reason for our success as well. Yes, Mrs. Primrose, <laughs> your smile tells thousand words because she's telling those are not mere words. She has experienced it throughout her life. Thank you, Mrs. Primrose, for sharing that wonderful message with our participants. Once again, I would like to call our Mrs. Kushani on screen. Mrs. Kushani? Yes, Ganga? When I was listening to your keynote, and you were telling, so how you develop your values, competencies by looking at your mother. And you said that you are very sensitive to the, uh, the situations. And I, I saw a lot of genuine uh, women qualities in you. And I felt proud to see such a lady is there at leading a very special uh, place in the country uh, in the administrative and the legislative side contributing. Mrs. Kushani, what is your message to women out there? Thank you very much, Ganja, for giving me this opportunity to give this message to the women. I think the women have potential to take up any challenge in life. So don't ever let yourself fall down when the things go wrong, when the wings blow hard, just if you have to, but don't you quit. Yes, thank you, Mrs. Kushani. And it is indeed a, it's, it's indeed a great opportunity even to moderate this session because what I felt is once again, the alone we are single drop of water, but together we are an ocean. When I listen to all these elite panel of uh, females, so I felt that uh, the, the synergy effect together. Thank you, Mrs. Kushani, once again, giving such a wonderful uh, message and being sincere and letting all of us to know what we really have to do. Yes, uh, our uh, Darshika told that today, actually it's a very special panel. We have all women's here, but we are very lucky. We have one gentleman too. Our Professor R. Lakshman, whatever. Professor, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here, yeah. Professor, as final remark, I, on this special uh, occasion, I would like to know your thoughts or your advice to women out there because you have set a lot of example and you have paved even the today's opportunity with the Dilshan, the, our director of the CPM and with the guidance of uh, 
Professor Lakshman. So we are celebrating it. So what is your final thought or the advice to all the women out there? Thank you, Ganga. But uh, I don't know whether I have anything more to say than what you all have all said. You know, I think uh, uh, our keynote speaker, Kushani, I think gave a very, very uh, maybe uh, important address as to how the types of difficulties that they face, you know, which may not be faced by the men folk and for women to come to a higher position. And uh, in fact, recently I read something, maybe the, the first uh, DIG uh, who was appointed, uh, a woman uh, who was appointed and uh, the sort of uh, maybe letters and uh, maybe a lot of anonymous letters and even complaints about uh, this appointment, you know. So it really uh, is something which is not uh, quite correct, you know, because we should know that uh, uh, there should be equal participation from all and which we, everyone is expecting. But uh, in actual practice, you may uh, not f find it so, you know, because men might always say that we can... Uh, either overpower or uh, outpower you so that uh, uh, they will take the place. But uh, it, uh, if you really uh, uh, look at the current situation, maybe uh, especially if you look at the education area, you find that uh, uh, the uh, girls and uh, uh, ladies and women are doing very much better. They are able to take it. But uh, I think the weakness may arise in the practical applications. You know? So that's the area that one has to uh, strengthen. And uh, of course, in the European countries, there is no difference, you know, but in our countries, it is a little different because the Asian uh, countries are much more different and uh, maybe uh, they would uh, maybe uh, still, uh, <laughs> Sri Lanka is far more, far more better than maybe other countries like, like uh, maybe Pakistan or those countries where it is really, uh, they, they are really, uh, I have no uh, place, but they are also coming up. So uh, what I would like to say is that maybe uh, you have to continue uh, what you are going and as uh, was told by many, uh, that you have to uh, have uh, build your confidence. Uh, you can't uh, give it up uh, halfway, you know, or maybe discouraged. Uh, I think uh, they are where you need maybe the support. I'm sure if you uh, your parents would be able to support. If you're married, maybe the husbands will be able to support. So some way that uh, uh, in that sort of difficulty where some sort of support is uh, uh, very essential because uh, maybe, uh, the, the, uh, maybe the staying power, uh, uh, maybe uh, in the case of women, maybe, maybe less than in the case of men. So that might be a reason that uh, they would need uh, uh, support from others, but uh, there are a lot of areas where there can be uh, improvement if uh, women are also there in the uh, forefront. You know, one is that uh, uh, taking right and correct decisions, and that's a very, very uh, important uh, area where uh, one could stand up to what you, uh, what you are doing right, you know. But supposing uh, they say, okay, uh, we will overpower you and we do something different, then uh, uh, that's not a very, very acceptable thing. So uh, on the whole, uh, this sort of uh, uh, International Women's Day will help uh, uh, to bring out now, even in our case, uh, we have say maybe eight or uh, uh, nine ladies who have come forward with uh, what they are doing, uh, which are really exceptional, you know. I'm sure Ganga is doing uh, a very, very good job uh, at the university, uh, turning out maybe uh, very, very uh, uh, good financial professionals while improving herself also. It's similar maybe even in the IT area where uh, Buddhima will be doing. Then in the parliament where we have, uh, I think it's uh, very, very, uh, maybe we are very happy because we have a member who's uh, uh, the... Uh, I am sure that uh, we are with uh, strong determination that we will, she will have that one day we will see her as the Secretary General. I think that's what uh, uh, we are looking at. You know? So that's uh, sort of uh, maybe courage and support uh, that we also need to give. Now, uh, that's uh, 
even yes. for professional bodies where they can bring them uh, and highlight them and where they can speak at our occasions, where build them up. So these are also very, very important. So I'm sure organizations like CPM can also uh, uh, play a major role uh, in this one. Because if you look at Darshika also now, uh, where she was being able to uh, maybe giving a uh, very good uh, introductions of everyone, you know. So you must be very happy because uh, uh, she already uh, has uh, given uh, something exceptional of what you are doing. So on the whole, I think this is a very, very successful one. Ganga, you have been moderating it very well. And of yes, course, uh, Prim Primrose uh, doing her uh, own style. Uh, I've been doing, knowing her for a very, very long time. Yes, uh, Professor Lakshman. Uh, <laughs> thank, so thank you so you much, sir. And uh, he he's, uh, really has been uh, encouraging and uh, sort of a guiding arm to everyone. And I really like one thing that he said, uh, yes, uh, you have to get the support from the family. Yes, I'm sure that he has played that role, being a father, grandfather, and even a uh, uh, the, so throughout he has done it to society and the family so this is what really need to come out ladies and gentlemen yes we have always almost come to the end of our panel discussion so when i was think about this almost one hour and 30 minutes discussion what i really felt is i think it was hillary clinton who said once again there are a lot of untapped potential uh, within women actually that is that is indeed true we as women it's I, I really felt when i was getting ready with this session yes women is like an iceberg what we really see is only the tip of iceberg so we can uh, the, uncover the underneath of it when you are facing the challenges so we being professional women all the panelists here and i'm sure even the other professional women and other women who are listening to us they have chosen to challenge and play their role in a better way so this, this is something that we really have to do and one last thought i would like to remind another thing yes we talk about gender equality and we talk about women but we should not forget the fact that we are playing a very important role at uh, home. What I have always seen is, yes, in the workplace, we may have challenges from the, our counterpart, but at home, we can bring challenges there. So it, it is the uh, kind of uh, harmony that we require. So once again, uh, we as professional women, yes, it is our role to have this equilibrium, not forgetting our social responsibility too. Before I conclude the panel discussion, I, yes, so action speaks louder than words. The international team is choose to challenge in line with the, that the CPM, the Chartered Institute of Professional Managers in Sri Lanka, chosen eight, of its ladies and gave this opportunity. So they paved the way and as I told earlier, they walk the talk. The, I should mention our director, Dilshan, for that uh, initiation and all. So uh, Professor Lakshman for giving that opportunity. So before I conclude uh, this, uh, I would like to ask from all my panelists, Just share one line, what you, how you choose to challenge during, uh, uh, maybe based on your scope. So first I would like to ask from Buddhima, so you can raise your hand and tell you choose to challenge in this way. So we are bringing one step forward, the turning our talk into actions. Dr. Buddhima, may I know how you choose to challenge? Yes, Ganga. Well, I choose to challenge myself. I compete with me always to become a better version of myself every day. I yes. believe that education is lifelong. Thank you, Dr. Buddhima. Then, Mrs. Bonali, how you choose to challenge? Okay, so my strength as a, as a woman, let's find a suitable place using our feminine power as well as potential through the creativity. Yes. Mrs. Shifara, how did you choose to challenge? 
I chose to challenge the limits we have set for ourselves. As a leader, my focus will be on empowering the women around me to believe in them, develop confidence. Mrs. Primrose. Yes, Ms. Ganga. And as the famous saying by Napoleon Hill goes, every adversity has a seed of opportunity. So it's important to have an open mind and positive mind. Yes, Mrs. Kushali. I would simply say, uh, never give up, Ganga. Never give up. Yes, thank you. I also choose to challenge. I thought of empowering women out there to achieve the financial independence through financial literacy. I would like to ask from our professor also how he chose to challenge. I think uh, my challenge is to support all of you, you know, okay? <laughs> yes. I'm sure that Dilshan also would share the same uh, thoughts. That's very yes. sweet. And we should be thankful to uh, uh, Professor Lakshman uh, Vattavala for giving his patronage uh, for all these programs and for inspiring speech, uh, for inspiring us women. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you Mrs. Kushali, once again. Uh, with you. that, uh, I would like to hand over control back to our MC, Ms. Darshika. Ms. Darshika, can you tell us how you choose to challenge? Thank you, Ganga. I choose to challenge myself because I believe you should be the change as long as you're passionate about what you want to do. You are unstoppable. Breaks the barriers, follow your dreams. You are unstoppable. Yes, Darshika, thank you very much. And then, once again, yeah, this as is a historical day. So I really want everyone to switch on their video and let's have, once again, the promise we choose to challenge and let's take a very quick uh, Thank you. Thank you, ladies. As all good things come to an end in life, so is our session today. On behalf of the Institute of Chartered Professional Managers of Sri Lanka, I take this opportunity to propose a vote of thanks all for all of you who made this event success. At the outset, I thank our keynote speaker, Mrs. Kushani Rohanadera. You are really enlightened with your session and it's truly inspiring. Thank you once again. Also, I would like to thank our session facilitator, Ms. Ganga, and our panelists, namely Ms. Shifara Farooq, Mrs. Bonali Pereira, Dr. Buddhima Subasinghe, and Mrs. Primrose for a wonderful panel discussion, motivating and empowering our women to break the barriers and achieve their dreams. We thank all of you sharing your learnings and experience with us in this evening. It is not possible to thank everyone for such appreciating involvement and willingness they have expressed to complete this event. Last but not least, we didn't forget you, of course. Our heartfelt thanks to all of you, our valuable participants for your active participation. With these warm words, we move to the end of today's session. Thank you very much and hope to see all of you with another interactive session by CPN Sri Lanka. Have a pleasant evening. All the very best. <laughs>